Okay, students, today we are going to talk about the rise of fascism, which is one of the examples of totalitarianism. So first of all, do you still remember the meanings of totalitarianism? So before we move on, just a quick review. Totalitarianism, which is in Chinese, it refers to a political system where the state holds total authority over the society and seeks to control all aspects of public and private life. So once again, uh, this is what I always remind you when we refer to totalitarianism, you can always remember the first five letters, total. And it means that the state, the totalitarian government have total control over everything in the state. Okay, so um, in the previous lessons, we have talked about one of the totalitarianism in Europe, which is Nazism in Germany. And today we are going to focus on fascism in Italy. And before we move on, I would like you to get ready of your booklet. Okay, so everyone, please go to Nonio Notes and then go to materials. And then as usual, subject shared. And then please go to folder eight, the Second World War. And then you will see top top two, two rise of fascism and militarism. And please open it. Right. So today we are going to cover um, page one to page three, which is about to fascism in Italy. Okay. So everybody get ready of. Um, you have to put like six and then you're ready for the lesson. Um, before we talk about fascism, I think we have to think about it. Why did fascism rise in Italy after the First World War? I'm sure that you should be able to tell me why did Nazism rise in Germany after the First World War? So that's why in today's lesson, we focus on fascism in Italy. So a few more questions. Why did Italy join the First World War? How was Italy being treated during the Paris Peace Conference? Maybe if we want to understand, if we want to note about the reason for the rise of fascism in Italy, we should go back to the history before the First World War. And then we should ask ourselves, why Italy joined the war? And then did Italy get what she wanted after the First World War? So students now, please um, go to page two of booklet six, and then we're now in part A, A1, Italy and the First World War. So the first question is, why did Italy join the First World War? Remember that in 1915, or, or I should say in this way, in 1914, at the very beginning of the First World War, Italy, even though it was um, the allies of Germany and Austria, it did not join the First World War. And then it was until 1915 when Britain and France promised Italy to, get, um, to give her land um, Albania and then Dementia, our two regions in the Balkans. So with the territorial temptation, Italy promised to join the war and sided with Britain and France. And this is called the Treaty of London. So students remember, it was in 1915, Britain and France and Italy, they signed the Treaty of London and then Britain and France promised to give Italy land after the First World War. So remember that we talk about the Paris Peace Conference in the first term. Um, was Italy one of the victorious country? Yes, it was. Uh, was Italy one of the big three? No, it wasn't. So do you think Italy could get the land it wanted? So now we move to questions two. During the First World War, um, the Italians suffered a lot uh, as most of the participating countries. Um, so, um, or I should say in this way, uh, in 1915, the Italians, they wanted to get land, especially the Italian government. It wanted to get more land. And that's why uh, Italy agreed to join the First World War. But then during the war, it was not as, you know, as easy as the Italians imagined because Italy suffered a lot during the First World War. For example, 650,000 soldiers lost their life. And then during the war, uh, situation like 
Germany, Britain, and France, okay, materials are very limited. So a lot of Italians, they have to suffer from shortage of goods. So that's the problem. In 1915, Italy joined the First World War uh, because it wanted to get land. And then during the First World War, the Italians also suffered a lot. So in 1919, when Italy attended the Paris Peace Conference, it's really aimed, you know, expected to get what it was promised. Right? So it was the Paris Peace Conference. Italy wanted to get the promised land, but then Italy did not get that land. Okay? Okay, so that's why now students we move to part A2, Italy after the First World War. So think about it. The Italians, okay, um, they were all expected to get the promised land because they suffered a lot. And then they think that, uh, they thought that, okay, uh, it was a compromise to them. Okay, but then the, the fact is, in the Paris Peace Conference, Italy did not get the promised land. All right, so situation after uh, the First World War. Internal situation, because um, Italy failed to get the promised land, so internally, okay, a lot of Italians were very, very dissatisfied, and social discontent was common. Social discontent, it means especially they blame the government for um for joining in the first world war but then at the end getting nothing all right and as usual like other participating country italy was also affected by the post-war economics problems so you can see that italy after the first world war internally they have social problems and economics problems too and for external circumstances, okay, it, Italy thought that they were not fairly treated because it was unable to make any decision in the Paris Peace Conference. Most importantly, Italy did not receive the land promised by Britain and France. Okay, and therefore the Italians were angry and then they wanted to get rid of the existing government and then set up a new and powerful government um, to bring glory to Italy. So the rise of fascism is actually very straightforward in Italy, unlike the situation in Germany, all right, um, that suffering suffered from a lot of economic problems and then the Weimar uh, attempted to solve the economic problems. Uh, actually, in 1923 to 29, the Weimar was able to solve the problems. But then, because of the Great Depression, economic problems appear again. And that's why the Germans finally supported Hitler, the leader of the Nazi party. But then the situation in Italy was actually quite sim uh, simple, very smooth and direct. That is, after the First World War, the Italians were angry because they could not get the the promised land. And that's why in the 1920s, in the early 1920s, they started to look for a new leader. And then it gave rise to fascism. All right, so now students, how about we move to page three, the rise of fascism, okay? So like what I introduced to you uh, in the background uh, for the rise of fascism, the Italian was unhappy with the parent peace settlement. And then they also face serious economic problems. And they also believe that the democratic government at that time could not solve the problems. So they wanted a strong leader. And this is the main reason for the rise of fascism. So fascism is very simple. That's why Italy did not join the First World War in 1914. And it was 1915 that Britain and France asked, invited, Italy to join the war, promising land. And then after the war or during the war, Italy suffered a lot. And at the end, Italy did not get anything. And that's why they want a strong leader. So who was the strong leader in Italy? Is he the one? He is called 
Mussolini Masolele. So before we move on, have a look of a video uh, which introducing Mussolini. We just watched the YouTube clip, which about the background, uh, some introduction about Mussolini. All right, so uh, we just move on, okay? So now we are on page three, B1. Who is Mussolini? Masolini is who is Mussolini? Okay. All right, so before entering the political scenes, Mussolini was, oh, he was only an elementary school teacher. You know, he was only an elementary school teacher. So during the First World War, he was uh, one of the Italian soldier, and then um, he fight in the front line for nine months. Okay, 一次大戰期間咧，佢參與咗咧意大利嘅軍隊，曾經喺前線咧打過九個月嘅仗嘅。All right, and then after the First World War, uh, he joined the National Fascist Party, and then he soon became the leader of the party. So students, uh, for this point, you can compare. Uh, Mussolini with Hitler, so um, they both joined the First World War, they both joined the army, so uh, Hitler joined the German army and then Mussolini joined the Italian army, and then they both, uh, when, I mean, after the First World War, they, when they come and when they return home, they both joined political party, and then they, they were both very famous, Supported by the party members, and then they both soon become the leader of the party. So Mussolini too. All right. So um, you can see that Hitler and Mussolini share a lot of similarities, but one obvious difference is the rise of Mussolini was very smooth. Unlike Hitler, that he uh, he attempted to overthrow the Weimar government, but then he failed. And then he sent to uh, jail, and then he stayed in the jail for years. But then for Mussolini, no, okay, he was quite successful. So have a look at it. In 1922, Mussolini became the leader of the fascist party already, and then he was very, very angry towards the democratic government in Italy once again because the democratic government failed to get the promised land in the Paris Peace Conference. So that's why in 1922 he led. Twenty thousand black shirt. What means by black shirt? 即系点啊？佢着二万件黑恤衫。No, 
flexure is the term to describe referring to the member or the supporter of Mussolini. All right. So in 1922, he and about two uh, 20,000 uh, supporters, okay, they march on Rome. Rome, if you remember what you have learned in Form 1 history, which is a capital of Italy. In 1922, Mussolini and his 20,000 supporters, they just walk to the room. We call this incident March on Rome. And then after the marching, uh, or I should say in this way, because of the march, the government felt pressure from Mussolini. And that's why the current uh, prime minister resigned. And then naturally, Mussolini became the new prime minister and this is how he got power. So before we move on, I would also like to show you the documentary about March on Rome. Do they go so like hand up a law, Marlet? Hi, Dimale. Have I a bowl like a le? Yamo chung that gale? Yamo hoi churn le? You may have a look. <laughs> Okay, students, so from um, the video, you can see what is March on Rome. So Mussolini and his supporters, they really, really just walking into the room. And then uh, they didn't, uh, of course, they bring along their guns, but then they didn't fight. And then actually the march is quite peaceful. And then just facing the pressure from Mussolini and his supporters, um, the former prime minister stepped down and then Mussolini became the new prime minister and he became the 27th prime minister of Italy. So just move on. So in 1922, Mussolini, because of Martin Rome, he became the prime minister. And then in 1925, he claimed himself the Ile Duce. It means the leader of Italy. Ile Duce, okay? This is not Ile, okay? This is the first letter, which is capital I. And then the second letter is the small letter L, Ile Duce, all right? And then in 1930 to 43, he even claimed himself the cater of fascist Italy. And that is the rise of Mussolini. Okay, so um, let's move to part B3 then, okay? Um, because the reason for the rise of fascism and then the road um, to power of Mussolini uh, are actually very simple and direct. So um, um, as I'm sure that uh, most of you would understand, especially we've talked about Nazism in the previous lesson. So you have a basic understanding about totalitarian government. Okay, so um, you can always compare Nazism with Fascism, and then you will see some similarities, but at the same time, some differences as well. Look at the features of Fascism. Number one, okay, similar to Nazism, which is one party and one man dictatorship. Mussolini, fascist party. So fascist party and Mussolini, they were the dictator, dictatorship 
of Italy. Number two, because fascism is a totalitarian regime, so absolute obedience is expected. Number three, total control and oppression. Number four, okay, Mussolini, um, uh, he was really good at um, promoting himself. And then we call that his cult of personality. Okay, so he is so good of promoting himself. Number five, okay, fascism, which is anti-communism. And then the next point, number six, which is economic self-sufficiency, uh, which is similar to Nazism as well. And then the last feature, military and territorial expansion. So seven features of fascism. Okay, so students, so um, actually, oh, we talk about two totalitarian leaderships uh, in Europe before the Second World War, Nazism in Germany and Fascism in Italy. So we could see two dictators in Europe in the 1930s. And then later on, they, uh, they were not just friends. Later on in 1946, they even formed allies. Could it some different him man yao? Hey, go sang only net. Hey, the light to my masole, could it then love your Berlin Rome assets? Okay, come on, you call it sun game man. Yeah, all right. And then you can see that they were very common. Um, they have a lot of similarities as well. Could it do your hodole gum tongue get that thing? Um, just now I mentioned that um, Mussolini was very good at promoting himself. One, one of the ways of promoting himself is delivering public speech. Remember that uh, when we talk about Nazism, I've shared some uh, speech by Hitler to you. So at the end of the lesson, I would also like to show you the speech of Mussolini and then let you know more about him. Nel terzo annuale del passaggio del Mareb, il duce fra i gloriosi mutilati della Grande Guerra d'Africa e di Spagna inaugura alla casa madre nuove opere d'arte esaltanti l'eroismo della razza e le sue armi. Nella corte delle vittorie, il capo sosta ad ammirare gli affreschi intonati alle epopee belliche che vanno dal 1911 alla fondazione dell'impero e i busti marmorei dei maggiori condottieri dell'Italia guerriera. L'applauso di una letta adunata di eroi e la lata parola dell'onorevole Del Croix salutano l'apparire del fondatore dell'impero al polio che affaccia sul cortile della vittoria. in questa casa che è vostra perché è abitata dalla vittoria. Duce, noi non sappiamo se 20 anni saranno bastati a fare di un armistizio una pace, ma sappiamo che di ogni ingiustizia patita Voi avete fatto in questo tempo un'altra vittoria. In vano le forze del mare attraverseranno l'opera vostra perché i popoli hanno veduto che sono gli eroi a fare la storia. E 
e forse una nuova era di pace sarà stata inaugurata da voi che ne avete rialzato l'ara in Roma restituita la sua dignità che ne avete rialzato l'ara in Roma restituita la sua dignità e al suo destino d'inferno Okay, so from the speech of Mussolini, then you can see that, right, that um, he was so good at public speech like his, uh, and then um, a lot of audience always listening to his speech and then giving him a lot of support. All right, so students, before the end of the lesson, one task for you. We've talked about totalitarianism in Europe, then how about the totalitarian state in Asia, Japan? I would like you to think before the next lesson, if, if Nazism rose to power in Germany because of economics problems, if Fascism rose to power in Italy because of unfair treatment in the Parent Peace Conference, then why did militarism rise in Japan? So what I wanted to do is to think about why did militarism rise in Japan? before the next lesson. Now, let's look at page four of booklet six. So you will see part C, rise of militarism, and there is a box for brainstorming. And then I show you the map of Japan, and I would like you to think, do you think it's good or bad to live in an island country? Island country. It's good or bad. And then explain your view. And then we will share about our ideas in next lesson. And that's the end of today.